anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God the Heavenly Father to give us life. And he raised with perfection the copy of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The God of grace and glory, we bear before you this day our sister Charmaine. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love and companion and our earthly privilege. In your boldest compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to stay there at the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those whom we have gone before, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Seasons. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe me, God, believe all sin. I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death. Or anything else in our creation. We have disappeared us from the Lord God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So that when we live or when we die, we are the Lord. For the this time Christ died and lived again, he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We are now living to God. And we take nothing of it. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes us in. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Eternal God is our refuge, and our needs are the everlasting. Please sit. Five tributes, so please, Vera Williams, Pierce Pass Student Association, Sandra Joseph, Sir Stephen Spire, I will assume, Ronald Henry. So please follow up each other. Church, the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. All oh, your mercy never failed me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. And I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. And I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. 
You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. And I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running after it's running after me, mm. cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. When my life lay down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able And I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Cause I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing, cause I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. Good afternoon, church. The members of the peers, past student, alumni, are here to pay our last respects to one of our very own, Charmaine. And we trust that our dear friend and member of this said choir, Dino, will find comfort in what we are about to present this afternoon. And also his mom, Lucy, will just ask you, dear friend, to hold on to God's on changing hand.
afternoon church. <clears throat> well, I'm tired, I'm so weary, but I must toil on till the Lord comes and calls me, calls me Change from this creature that I 
be peace, peace in the valley for me.
make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, church. On behalf of the staff at the VC Bird International Airport, I'd like to send condolences to the family of the late Charmin Brown Thomas, a former co-worker at the security department. And the, the father says, be strong in the Lord and also in the power of his might. And you know, today I, we are here to pay respect to the family of the late Charmaine Brown. And my song today is Stand Up Strong. Sometimes I feel so lonely and sometimes I feel so sad Sometimes life seems so empty And everything makes me mad I made all life sorrow And I made all I sway, my Jesus, my hands would lift me up again. Can the church sing with me? Stand up for Jesus, no matter what's wrong. Stand up. Even dead, stand up, no matter what's wrong, stand up, stand up, stand up strong. Sometimes I feel so lonely. Since a good friend passed away, I know we'll really miss her, but I know we'll meet again. I wonder why she died, but it's not for me to know, Christ made us with his hands, and our destiny he plans. Stand up for Jesus, no matter what's wrong. Stand up for Jesus, even death comes alone. Stand up for Jesus, no matter what's wrong. Stand up, stand up, stand up strong. Stand
good afternoon. To love deeply is one of life's most profound gifts. And the loss of a loved one is one of life's most profound tragedies. Today will be a tough one. But let us be reminded of Matthew 5, verse 4, that says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Charmaine Francella Brown Thomas was born on March 3, 1964, to Lorna Warner and Gladstone Brown, who both preceded her in death. She was the fourth of six children who was fondly called Mentos while growing up as a child. Charmaine attended the Willikis Primary School and went on to the Pierce Secondary School. After leaving school, she worked as a chambermaid at a property in Mill Reef Club with her sister Lucy for many years until her boss's tenure as general manager ended. In May 1991, she gave birth to her one and only child, Karif. After she left the Mill Reef Club, she was employed as a security officer at the VC Bird International Airport, where she worked for many years until she was transferred to the National Technical Training Center in 2004. She remained there until its doors were closed in 2016. She was then transferred to the Willikies Primary School, where she worked until she resigned in 2019. She then migrated to St. Croix in 2019 after the death of her, mo her mother, Lorna, and became the caretaker of her father, Gladstone, until his passing in 2021. In between all this tragedy, however, Charmaine found time for love and married Everett Thomas in January 2020. Charmaine was a young woman who brought joy to so many of our hearts here today. She loved her son dearly, as well as her nieces and nephews, for whom she always, always inquired about and shared concern for their well-being and things that were happening in their lives. Charmaine was close to all her siblings, especially her sister Lucy. They worked at the Mill Reef Club together for many years and enjoyed their time there. Charmaine is remembered as a fun-loving person who loved dressing up, going to parties, and dancing. She and Lucy would go dancing and to parties together, even sometimes dressing alike when they went out. According to Lucy, they did everything together, even argue. Charmaine was also very loving, helpful, and ambitious, and would share whatever she had, regardless of what she had to sacrifice. Many of the, many of the students and staff at the NTTC could attest to this. Charmaine was like a mother to so many of the children, helping to buy lunches, counseling them, and in general, looked out for them in every way she possibly could. Even years after they would have left NTTC, students still returned looking for her because of the impact she made on their lives. Although she was the security guard at the school, she filled so many other roles. There were even times when teachers were absent that she would hold a class and ensure the students did their work and kept order. Her family, friends, and even her students knew that as much as she loved and cared for them, she did not hesitate to tell them like it is. Charmaine was the type of person that would tell you exactly how she feels about a situation, and firmly and loudly so if she had to. If you choose not to listen, she would end with, it's your business that. Charmaine loved traveling and was very ambitious. She always wanted to learn more and was always open to learning something new. She was not ashamed to admit she did not know something, and most importantly, she was not afraid to be taught. This is one of the things that made her such a beautiful soul. She was not only active at her workplace and in her family life, but also at church. She was a member of the St. Stephen's Mother's Union, 
and was very involved in church activities, making sure to contribute in whatever way she could when the church had functions. Charmaine fell ill and was admitted to the hospital on June 1st, 2022. Not in our wildest dreams did we think that these would have been her last days. On July 13th, Charmaine took her last breath and said goodbye to this world. She was a warm and friendly person who had so many dreams and plans, but heaven needed an angel. Charmaine, as you smile and watch over us, know that we will forever honor and cherish every memory of you in our hearts. We love you and will miss you. May your beautiful soul rest in eternal peace. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O oh Lord, who by our sins are justly angered. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O oh Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. We now stand and sing the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness.
God, we remember before you today your servant Charmaine. And we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please sit for the ministry of the word. A reading from the Word of God, written in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 12. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter on the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. This is the reading. Amen. Psalm 121, and we we'll stand for the glory of Patrick. <laughs>
Good afternoon, church. Our second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 57. And it reads, Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we'll all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Him, life is like a mountain real world.
A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to join the sixth chapter, beginning at the 37th verse. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word. And lead us to the living word, your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. And now speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If I may venture to say on behalf of your shepherd, Reverend Paul E. Burns, the community here at St. Stephen's, on behalf of my family, to you, Lucy, and others, the Browns, we offer you our deepest condolences. But, but, if we are Christians, not Anglicans, not Methodists, or Moravians, or even Adventists, but if we are Christians, we understand that we can smile even on a day like this because we have been promised eternal life. And beyond that, Christians know the outcome of our stories, don't we? Every Christian, given 50 years, and that seems to be the trend for today, 50, 40, well, I haven't even gone lower, or 70 or 80, that I know, that on the day of judgment, or even before the day of judgment, I know when I depart this world that I am in the presence of Almighty God. And that seems to be a challenge for so many people, even for some Christians. Because many of us do believe that after death, there is nothing else. Well, you can fool yourself and make up or smoke your pipe. But as for me, not even me and my household, as for me, not even for my wife, as for me, I will continue to serve the Lord. Because I look forward to hopefully one day provide our beloved sister, made the election sure that we will see each other again. Today I speak to you on the topic, sudden death. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 12 to 26, Jesus explains a parable. Now we know parable is what? An earthly story with heavenly meaning. Exactly. He spoke of a noble man who went off to visit a distant country. And before he left, he gave his ten servants or managers his account to manage and said, take care of this account until I return. He says, do business with these until I come back. My friends, in this text, Jesus compares himself to this noble man. Jesus physically no longer walks this earth. And he has gone away. He said, I will return. His people are to prepare for his second return. Now, how do we know that he will return again? We know as Christians, or ought to know as Christians, that in his absence, we are given the mandate to continue his mission here on earth. The great commission that is recorded in Matthew chapter 28. We are not only priests are called to carry the mission, 
to, to teach, baptize, and bring us into the kingdom of God, but all persons who are his followers. And this is the work that God has left behind for us. Just as a noble man left behind work for his managers, we have work to do. But it seems there's only a few are able or concerned about it. Why? Well, when we look around us, we can see the state of the world. It seems, more peop it seems that people are more interested in earthly things than heavenly things. But my Christians, but my brothers and sisters in Christ, we must be ready for the return of Christ. In his letter, chapter 4, verse 14, James warned his readers of boasting about tomorrow. I know by now, at least the adults, we don't brag about tomorrow. We say what? If it is God's will. This is what James said to his readers. Yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while, and then puff. It's like an air, you just disappear. And we're experiencing that more and more. I don't know if you have COVID to blame for it. My wife told me she heard the news that, or she read it, that the earth is spinning a little bit faster on its axles. I don't know if you heard that. So I said, that may be one possibility why it seems to be going crazy. Right? But what that says, we look at climate change. We see what is happening. And yet, some of us are not looking at the signs. And when I talk about the signs, let me quick jump in to quickly say that I'm not referring to the signs of these are the days of the last, these are the last days. Jesus is coming soon. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, at least, the last days began over 2,000 years ago when Jesus came as a baby. So the last days, whether, it, whether it's yesterday, 2,000 years ago, or a million years, because no one knows when he will return. So we ought to be in a period of preparedness. When hurricane will come, are we ready? Or prepare? But we believe that Jesus will come sometime I hope my sister got an opportunity to repent of her sins. I mean, she's already a Christian. But I pray that everyone in here can show, not your hands, but your heart, that you are a Christian. None of me business. But it's a serious question. That demands a serious answer. And as people, we must stop condemning or believe we have the only access to Jesus. That you are not Christian. Do you notice that there are some, uh, some Christian mission churches, evangelicals, believe that established churches are not Christian, uh, the people that attend in, uh, established churches are not Christians? It is sad, very sad. Right? But our relationship, your relationship with God, is what matters. And as Christians, let no labels be upon us. Because on the day of Christmas, on the day of Christmas, <laughs> on the day of judgment, you think God you know you want Adventist? Well, he would know, but if you ask you what he does at Adventist, you know what Christians will be judged upon? Tell me. What will Christians be judged upon? Huh? Your the life you live and the work that you do, just as you did it to one of the least, you did it to me. Not to worship on a Sunday, or Saturday, or Monday, or Tuesday. Did you give a cup of water? Those are Christians will be judged upon. The talents that was given to, to, to his um, managers, we know the story that those, who, that those who got ten invested it, those who got five invested it, those who got one invested it, but one individual said, I know you're hard taskmaster, so I'm afraid of you. So I hid it. The Lord said to him, you wicked servant, take him out, depart from me. 
And we don't want to hear that, my friends. Therefore, Jesus advises in Mark chapter 13, verse 35. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will return. Fellow sojourners, we are all on a journey to a city whose builder is not of this world. And a number of comments of the Lord are taught in the scriptures. There are at least four. Jesus came as a savior. And that is considered his first advent. He also came to us as what? On the day of Pentecost of the Holy Spirit. And there are two other times when he will come. Not these are the last days and I'm waiting for him coming down on the clouds. But he also come in debt. So if you're not ready to, make, to, to face our God, he comes also in debt. And then the last is judgment. What did you do with the talents I gave you? My friends, it is with reference to the last two that the text speaks. Death and judgment. Death and judgment is certain. We cannot escape these two events. Take care who you be. You can't escape these events, my friends. The time is uncertain for all of us. Definitely unknown to us. We know not when the time is, says Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. Jesus gave two striking illustrations and lessons to us to watch. The thief that comes in the night and the ten virgins. Five what? Wise. And that speaks to our preparedness for his coming. In reference to the thief coming, death and judgment in the day of the Lord challenges us, my, challenges us to be watchful and to expect the unexpected. And it's only how we can do that is by saying into my heart, Lord Jesus, Whether you do it at the front and be on behalf of your parents and godparents, that we Christians that are anarchists are not ashamed to confess that we are Christians. Whether you do it long bay on a Sunday or a Saturday, we are Christians. Amen. And let no one else tell you that. You're not. My friends, in the night the thief walks and sneaks around. If the individual knows the time that the thief is coming, he will watch with diligence, waiting up for when that individual comes into his or her house. Similarly, death does not send you a letter to indicate to you that it is on its way. It may give you some time. Yesterday, I returned from Anguilla for an ordination. And for the couple of days I was there, I, my concern was just to visit the shuttings that, that I had ministered to over almost three years. And it so happened that one of, one of them they died yesterday, when I, one died, individual died yesterday when I was there. And it was like just seeing she's taking her last breath, you know? And it reminds me that time is so limited, especially when I'm traveling in a very small plane Chance and Willow. I told them I will always support local, but I can't possibly do it again. Because they get in to the plane and they put one foot in, they lean over on the chair, and my footwork cramped my knees. So the next time, it's either going to be later when they're going to St. Martin, and then I take the boat over. The point I'm making, my friends, is that when I travel, I always say, could this be my last day? But I was told that these small places are more safer than the others, right? But the point we do not know. We have to always prepare. Every time I'm landing, I pick this up from Reverend Selena. Every time she's leaving or coming in, the plane is taking off or landing, she makes the sign of the cross. And I can't do that. Just remind myself, boy, you're not in the pilot's hands. You're in the Lord's hands. And God forbid, I want to live to a long, ripe age that he will take me. But the point is, we must be ready for his coming. And many of us will all see that second, that third coming. Death. 
Do you know how many unsaved lives are in this world? It's believed maybe there are two billion out of six billion people that are maybe committed to Christ. Do you want Jesus to come and four billion people are ready for me, their master? Whether they believe in him or not? No. So his delay of his return is to empower us, his children, to empower others to come into the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is not one day you're Christian and everything you're saved. So you know that if you're dead today, you go to heaven. We pray. So salvation, my friends, sometimes we think it's a done deal. But it's a process. It was St. Paul who said, he's in a race. And every day he prayed to Almighty God that he see his face. So do not use the opportunity to say, well, I'm not ready, I'm having fun. You may not want to enjoy burning flames now. I don't know if it's TN or whoever. But if you struggle, it's okay. If you fall back, it is okay. Provided you ask God for forgiveness. But don't take God's forgiveness for granted. Jesus loves us so much. And it is his desire to dwell with all of us. Not some, but all of us. Believe and you shall be saved. That is all required for salvation. Just believe in Jesus Christ. The other things must come. You must live for him. And if possible, die for him. Because he died on the cross for us to save our lives. And that is why when death comes or suffering, we must be mature about the events that we are going through. We are there to console. For me, I try to, to, to encourage people to know that, listen, if you believe that this shell, this gorgeous seed, I can feel it, why do you think you're able to feel your body? Because there's what? As life, there's a spirit. Can you see that life within you? No. But you know it's there, ain't it? Because if it was not there, then what would happen? Death. So our sister's spirit is before God, has gone back before God. So you think the spirit dead? The shell is there. And so I try to encourage persons of lost, lost loved ones that yes, mourn, cry, but guess what? She is alive. And that might sound unreasonable to some. They may say you're preaching fallacy. Do you believe when we come here to, 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 to worship God that we are the only persons here? Will there be a hundred people here now? Or I believe the saints are also part of this realm. If we don't, then we can't believe in life after death. Because we think it's just the body. It was Paul who said in the second lesson that one day we will be where we will rise to glory. And he compares the resurrection to a seed. You have the seed in your hand, you can see it. When you plant it in the ground, can you see it? Do you know what's happening? Do you know what's happening? Yes, we have an idea because what? You did science subjects. And you say, you know, it germinates, but you can't see. And so Paul compares the resurrection to that illustration. We do not know how it's going to happen. But because of faith, we believe that we'll be raised on that day. And not wishing to show you off your faith. That we believe that this same earth we're standing on, this is where we're going to be. Not in this form. Not in this form. But the book of Revelation tells us that the temple of God will come down to meet her bride. We can't phantom that. We can't phantom how that's possible. But God has given an opportunity even in the science. Because when we look at the Hubble scope that has revealed to us the galaxies, how they came, this earth came together, comets coming together. There must be a God, there can't be an it. And so that gives an idea that the life is to come, it's going to be wonderful. 
is going to be eternity. And the 70 years that we have on this earth cannot be compared to that. So why worry? You're supposed to worry about your life. And if your life is true to Almighty God, I'm sorry. But commit your life to Christ. Struggle. There are some sins that are so sweet it's hard to let go. Why? Because you've been doing it for years. So you think all of a sudden you're a Christian and that's it? No. Pray and ask God to help you daily. Daily, daily, daily. And so if we want to see our beloved sister for Virgin Mary at her election show, we know what to do. So we're not only celebrating her life, her commitment to her family and to her God, but I'm sure she'll be happy to know that we are all reminded of the need to prepare for God's coming, my friends. Time is short. Do I let the time run out on you? God has given us that, God has given us that opportunity to make our election show today. So guess what? Just in case you have not asked him to come into our lives, into my heart, Lord Jesus, just in case he spoke to us last night or even today, and your sense today may be your last, guess what? There's an opportunity. So I'm going to give you a few seconds to come before God at this time and ask him to come into your heart. Yes, today is the day of salvation. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. So just in case there were unsaved souls inside here or outside, and you sing that song with conviction and belief, and was sincere, guess what? You are a Christian. Wow. So you have no excuse when you leave this church this afternoon. So maybe if there's a big people party coming up, mm, you know what to do. I'm not saying you can't go. But where can't just tell you to do? And I'm not saying it's a sin to go to. Oh boy, they may be saying, how oh, you can't get a sin to go to big people party? Mm. You know what God said about being a stumbling block? He charges us not to be stumbling blocks for those who may not understand or appreciate that God is in every aspect of our lives. And it was in June, my wife and I celebrated our anniversary, and I said, boy, how long to get some burning flames? Okay, if most of you know me, Alex Insider, <laughs> Alex Brown. And you know, we live the life. But you know what I said? Even though I'm married, and it's okay to go and dance, to burn the flames, come and marry, there's nothing can defile the marriage bed. I would not go because it could prevent persons from understanding. How could your priest be going to big people party? It is a sin because music will play. But the first meal I just performed, guess where it was? At a wedding? And he didn't suddenly use apple juice or grape juice. He turned water into the real thing. And he danced. The point I'm making, my friends, the last point I want to make, as you live a Christian life, do not let people judge you. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit is there to guide you. Right? So if you're married and you want to go to a big people party, go ahead. If you're single, that's up to you. I can't speak for single men or women. But I can say, provided you're going with your wife or your husband, that is. That is somebody else's woman. Right? So today, as we celebrate our sister's life, I'm just saying to you, we know the outcome of the Christian story. 
that after death there's life. Right? After morning, that comes in the night, there will be joy in the morning. The night that we live now is our lives, but the morning is the day of resurrection. And I'm sure that wonderful smile that she always carries will be there to greet us on the day of judgment. So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, God is good. Salvation is sure. All you have to do is grab it. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I've spoken to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. stand and now we affirm our faith in Christ and send the apostles screen on page 8 of the bulletin sorry of your order of service I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. We now have the intercessions. Please sit or kneel. <coughs> Intercession form B on page A. Page five, let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. May all who have been baptized in Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Yes. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Yes. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Yes. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Yes. Give me courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Yes. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Charmaine, who was born by water and the spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may be called to us your victory over death, and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way, and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, to the ages of ages. Amen. We offer to tell him, because he lives, and his eyes is on the sparrow.
Mr. Werner, sorry, but the orphan is already blessed. It's what happens sometimes when you're thrown off. You can sit, please, for the combination. Give us, so Christ, your servant with your saints. We are sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal from of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust we shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give verse, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. We are sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting. Let us commend our sister Charmaine to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant Charmaine, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil. And set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in eternal habitations. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's Spirit, you see it? No? Say it, 
The Lord's Prayer. Oh, Father. Into your hands, O oh, merciful Savior, we command your servant Shami, acknowledge your humble beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sin of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in that. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death. And give a light to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen. Give a light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the rock of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Into paradise where the angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. Just before we sing the second offertory hymn, we can say that in the session, it was paid for. We have the lovely meters. We also want to inform the congregation we will be asking the uh, beloved son. What's his name again? Harry. Harry. He has COVID, and so unfortunately, he is not here. But I encourage you to continue to keep him in your prayers and continue to be there for him. Whether it be as a mother, a father, an uncle, an aunt, a brother, or sister, or even cousin and friend, please keep him in your prayers. So we we'll stand and sing. That's it. His eyes is on the scholar. Then we have the long limiters.
practice on the bottom of page 9.